Welcome to Beware of Spoilers, I am Adam. Uh, so last week I was going to do Anna, and I was going to do Yesterday, and then I got sick, so I could not do that. Um, today is Monday, July 1st. Let's discuss a movie that just got re-released, um, Avengers Endgame. I've talked at length, about, uh, at length about Avengers Endgame. I've done now three episodes of this podcast. I've seen this movie three times. Maybe at least twice. i got to look back at how many times. It's either twice or three times. I've covered it on Beware of Spoilers. That said, I don't think that they put enough material after this movie to warrant it worth seeing again. If you're not interested in seeing it again for the merits of the movie itself. Um... It comes off bad. Number one, the first thing they show you after the credits uh, is a, a, a tribute to Stan Lee. That should have been in the theatrical cut. That shouldn't have been um, at the end of the movie. On a re-release. As a selling point to see the movie. The, like, By the way, we have, a, we have a tribute to Stan Lee now. That shouldn't have been there. Um... At the end of this, you know, at the end of the movie. It should have been there from the beginning. That's number one. Number two, there's a deleted scene. It's a brief deleted scene. Um, of the Hulk saving people from a, uh, what's it called? Um, the Hulk saving people from a, um, a burning building. Now, the, the scene got some laughs, and not for good reason. Uh, the scene got laughs because the CGI in the scene is noticeably unfinished. Um, I talked at length about this yesterday on Twitter in a reply to some some second-rate uh, comic book news site that was, you know, just saying, oh, it's a cash grab, it's a cash grab. Uh, the scene's unfinished, they couldn't even finish it. And let me, let's talk about why the scene was unfinished from a narrative standpoint. The scene, uh, when you when you watch the director's commentary for Infinity War, and uh, I'm assuming for Endgame 2 when it comes out, but strictly for Infinity War, which I've seen already, on the commentary they discuss how every scene needs to do multiple things, because the movie is so jam-packed and things need to happen. So, like, when you look at the beginning of the movie, um, when the Hulk gets beat by Thanos, that scene has dual purpose. It shows, first, Thanos' strength. It shows... Uh, it, 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 like, it sets him up, it shows, uh, like, his ruthlessness, his fighting style, the fact that he is the toughest one there, um, and it, it sets the plot in motion from there, it sends Hulk back to Earth to get Earth prepared, it sends Thor on his mission, it, it, like, that scene does a lot in that, in that small space, but it tells you all you need to know for the movie going forward, and it establishes a lot of what Thanos is doing, what he's, well, why he's there, um, so ultimately what happens is now you watch Endgame and the same thing's kind of happening where it's like um, scenes have more than just the on-the-face purpose. And as an, as an audience, you're, you're not trained to do this, or maybe you are trained to do it, but you're, it's just something that you, you do now. You, you look beyond the first layer and characterization and conflict and things like that are things that don't need to be explicitly told to you because you can internalize it based on what you're watching. You can say that... Uh, like the scene where, um, where Hulk and Rocket go to, um, New Asgard and talk to Thor, you can figure out Thor's state of mind. You can figure out what he's been up to in those five years without being told explicitly this is what Thor has done for the last five years. Um, and so that's what the scene is. This scene is designed to give you the information that the Hulk is a hero now. And the Hulk is in complete control of his facilities. Um, and then it's one of those things, too. When you write a movie, um, things sound good in your head uh, as the writer. And, and when you read it, it sounds good on paper. Um, take, for example, Harry Potter. When you read Harry Potter, the third act of, or the end, the very ending of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows is Harry talking out with Voldemort, the, uh, the, the allegiance of the Elder Wand. And then the end of the movie, uh, and then, uh, then you know, it's a very quick, less than half a page confrontation that ends with Voldemort dead. Because it's, it's dialogue-driven, because it's a book. It's, it's all words. In the movie, 
that would have fallen flat. And then when they tried to do that in um, Fantastic Piece, right, um, The Crimes of Grindelwald, the same thing happens, where it's a very not action heavy third ha- third act. It's very dialogue driven, and um, what ends up happening is it it kind of just falls flat. Um, a similar thing uh, happened here, where it's like, this is the kind of scene that you include in the movie, and when you, when you write the first draft, when you write it down, when you read it, and when you do the table read, and then when you shoot it, it all sounds really good. And it, it, and then what happens is, and then you put it in, and you start getting it into, into post-production, um, or you start working on it, and then you're like, huh, that's, uh, that's odd. Um, it doesn't look as good, the dialogue comes off a little bit clunky, and it's not, this is a fundamental problem with the scene, not something that, you know, can be, um, and it's not something that you can do, or it's like, we'll, we'll reshoot it and it'll come off better. No, it's kind of just like, you know, you, you gotta just ditch it, and you gotta exposit the same information in a different way. So what they do instead is then you get the diner scene with Hulk, the kids, and Ant-Man, and now, because Hulk and the kids and Ant-Man are talking, you, you get to, you figure out, we the audience figure out that the Hulk is now a hero. And the Hulk is publicly perceived as a hero for the first time in a way that he never was before, except for, you know, on Sakaar, where he was perceived as a champion. But now on Earth, he is perceived publicly as a hero. Um, and that, and that scene, and you can tell that that scene was added in after the fact, after principal photography, and you know how you can tell. When you watch it, I, I kept an eye out for it this time after someone after doing that uh, that thread yesterday on that post. I, um, I I kept an eye out for it. Um, there are only two, uh, three times that Natasha and Steve are in the scene because from the beginning of the scene we have uh, Ant Man, we have Hulk, and then we have Natasha and Steve on the other side of the um, on the other side of the table. Um, Natasha and Steve are shown in a quick aerial shot, um, and that's the only time that they're seen in the same, you know, in the same scene. Um, then, at the um, at the table, we get two quick reaction shots for them from them. Um, not even, you know, they don't acknowledge, they don't interact with the kids. Just two quick reaction shot reaction shots cutting away from the action of the scene, which is Ant Man and Hulk uh, having an argument whether or not the kids would take the picture with Ant Man. They cuts away from that, cuts to them, then cuts back to Ant-Man and Hulk. And even that, it's infrequent that Hulk and Ant-Man are sharing space in the scene. You don't see the two of them at once. And the real way you can tell that that scene was cut in after the fact is the clothing changes on the children when it's on the shot of uh, Steve and Natasha. So when you're on the shot of Steve and Natasha, you can see the kid... And really the way you can tell is the kid's sleeve changes if it's rolled up rolled down. From the time he walks over where you can see him... Um, the oldest, uh, the oldest boy, his, uh, his sweatshirt sleeve is rolled up all the way. Then when it cuts back to him, uh, when it cuts back to Steve and Natasha's view, and they're kind of, like, rolling their eyes, like, oh, come on, let's move, move us along, which is the audience's reaction, too, um, it, you can see, uh, the, the sleeve is down all the way. And then it cuts back and the sleeve's up, and that, that's the way you can tell that that scene was shot after the fact and cut in. Um, not even multiple takes, but it's, it, like, even the sweatshirt's slightly different. Um, with a small difference, but it's noticeable. And that's what the, that, that's what the scene is. Um, the unfinished CGI, if, uh, if you've ever watched deleted scenes from one of these movies, it's not uncommon for that to happen. They don't remaster the deleted scenes for the DVD release or even the theatrical release. Why? Because it's a waste of time for everyone involved. Um, because it's, it's an expensive proposition to get maybe another five people to watch it. Um... It's not worth the money to remaster a deleted scene. Um, and that's the problem here. Uh, the scene is not... It's, it's just wherever they realized in production, we can't have this scene in because it would, A, bulk the time up, B, it, it, it's not an efficient way to exposit this information, C, the dialogue's weird, D, it's like none of it like looks good. It just comes off... And the, the way it was described by the, by the screenwriters and by the directors is that it comes off as noise, and I agree with them. It's just... It's... it's it conflicts with both the scene before it and after it tonally. Because the scene before it, keep in mind, would be um, Steve and uh, Steve, Natasha and uh, Scott going to see Tony about time travel. Then the scene after it would be... Um, who's after that? I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to remember the sequence. Is that, I think it goes right to uh, them trying the time travel with... Um, what's it called? 
um, with uh, Hulk and with them testing it the first time. Um, so I think that that's the big difference here. Um, and why it's a good thing that that scene got cut. Um, and we really don't do these kind of deep dives, but I, I think this is something we could do uh, as a recurring segment on um, 30 Minute Reviews is deleted scenes from movies. But uh, for right now, because we're here, we're going to talk about it now. Um, the third thing that I completely disagree with them putting in this uh, re-release, if you want to call it that, is I I don't think that putting in the first minute of uh, Spider-Man Far From Home was a good idea. And let me tell you why. That movie was coming out tomorrow. Today is Ju- uh, July 1st. It drops tomorrow for the long weekend. Uh, I'm seeing it tomorrow. There's going to be an episode up tomorrow night about it. I don't think that there was enough... Like, you didn't... If someone's going to see the re-release of Avengers Endgame in theaters, they were going to see Far From Home. You don't need to put that little stinger on for Far From Home. This isn't like the original release where if it's a post credit scene, then that's different. But here, you don't need to add that on. What you should have added on is... Black Widow has been in production for, what, two months now? Cut in something from Black Widow. And then end it with Black Widow and announce the release date. Whatever the Marvel release date is in May. That first week of May, May 5th, I think it is. There you go. That would have gotten asses in seats. In a way that the first minute of a movie we know is coming out in... This dropped on Friday. It's coming out Tuesday. I that was I don't understand what the thought process was behind that. If this was, I I don't even think there's a way to really do that. That wouldn't come off weird. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, they could have done better with it with what they're re-releasing. Uh, the other thing I really want to talk about was the use of storytelling mechanics that you typically find in TV over the course of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, and that really comes from this being the the, the quote-unquote season finale of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because we don't have a... What's it called? Um, we don't have an episode... We don't have a uh, any idea what they're doing for season two yet, but we know they're continuing movies. Um, and if you look at how they do it, it's, it's a, it, it, season one, which we'll call the Infinity Saga for the sake of the season one. And that goes from Iron Man to Far From Home. Far From Home is really going to be more of a, um, what's it called? The, um, at the end of the episode of The Flash, they have the lightning, and there's that little scene post-lightning, um, which sets up the next season. That's what Far From Home is going to be. It is going to be setting the tone of where we go from here. Um, based on what we've, what we've seen. Um, I don't think that, um... And that's based on, of course, just watching the trailers and trying to figure out. I haven't seen the movie yet. It doesn't come out until tomorrow. Um, so the first movie that comes out in the next one to be Black Widow and then Eternals and Shang-Chi and uh, Black Panther 2 and Doctor Strange 2 and Captain Marvel 2 and the third Spider-Man movie. But there's plenty of things to really, you know, to do. Um, what I... When you look at this, the reason why the Marvel Cinematic Universe worked and other cinematic universes haven't is it's the application of storytelling above the, what's it called, above the need to try and establish the universe out of the gate. And it's like, at, at its core, each movie is a character study of some character and, and, and what they stand for. Like, Iron Man is, you know, establishing who Tony Stark is, then... When you get to Iron Man 2, you're flipping it. And it's like, let's take Iron Man, put him at his worst, and see how he reacts to this new this new status quo. Um, and, and, and typically, when someone is dying, he's going to bring out the worst in them. Uh, Incredible Hulk is just establishing who the Hulk is, what, uh, how his powers work, and, you know, all of that stuff. Captain America is, you know, Captain America's origin. Thor is Thor's origin. And then the Avengers is how this, they call it themselves. They call it a, uh, what's it called? A, um, a, uh, I forgot what the word was. Uh, a compound, no. Um, explosive combination, I think. It was something like that. That, uh, that Banner calls it on the helicarrier. Um, 
they, they bring it all together. Let's see what happens now. And now we have this team that's together. And then after that, we have to establish what does it mean for each of these characters now that they have to deal with the ramifications that has happened in the first Avengers movie. So we have Iron Man having to deal with the fact that he's got... He has... Iron Man, is at, his, at his core, has always been about let me keep control over what I can. And now he's seen, because he's seen the Katari, he's seen Aliens from Space, he has no control over anything. And that's a situation he's not comfortable with at all. So he, he starts breaking down, and that sets in, sets in motion the rest. And, and if you think about it, Iron Man 3 is one of the most pivotal movies in, you know, the remainder of the season, quote-unquote. Because if Iron Man 3 doesn't happen, and he doesn't have to deal with the fact that he can't be in control, that sets up his need to create Ultron. That sets up his... And then the, the creation of Ultron sets up Civil War. And then without Civil War... The Avengers could have beaten Thanos the first time, and then it doesn't set up. It, it, like without that, you don't get Endgame. Um, Thor: The Dark World is uh, it's. Uh, I mean, really, all it does is introduce the Ether uh, in the grand scheme of things. Um, and we, it's further confused what the nine realms are. Are they alternate dimensions? Are they? And no one really knows. Um, it introduces the Collector. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is another important one because it really sets up the relationships that are going to be pivotal in. Infinity War, in an Endgame, um, not well enough, in my opinion, I don't think that they do a good enough job setting up Gamora and Star-Lord's relationship between Guardians and Guardians 2, but what are you gonna do? Um, who else, what else was there? Uh, Winter Soldier helps too, because it, 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 uh, if you look at it in the sense of how would someone in the real world react to this, Civil War was the collapse of a giant not Civil War, uh, Winter Soldier, was a, a giant blow to public trust of, you know, powered individuals and people with superpowers and, you know, what what it means to have government over you. So it would make sense that now that this happens, it leads into between, like, Winter Soldier doesn't get enough credit for causing the problems that lead to Civil War. Because without... Um, the, the newfound public distrust in S.H.I.E.L.D. The Avengers no, the Avengers don't need to go out and fill that void. And because the Avengers are filling that void and they're, you know, seven people who can do a job moderately okay, it, it, it doesn't quite mesh properly, um, with the, with the public. And that leads to Civil War too. And Civil War is what causes everything to kind of go to hell. Because if civil if civil war doesn't happen, then you don't have you know there's there's no need for um, there's no need for you know Thanos to lose in the in the first in Infinity War. Um, where do you go from here? I said previously it's likely that um, Black Widow would introduce something major going forward. I said something to do with the Fantastic Four. I'm thinking more uh, based on set pictures now. I'm thinking more is introducing uh, Yelena, which is going to be going forward the black the the new Black Widow. Um, Eternals, I think, I read uh, a potential quote-unquote leak that said that there were going to be two separate, like, uh, overarching stories between Norman Osborn on Earth being the overarching bad guy, and then Cosmic to be Korvac. Um, I could see Korvac being starting to be set up in Eternals, but that's the one I'm most fascinated in. Because if you look at what they did through quote-unquote season one, everything has a narrative purpose. There's no movie that you can remove... That was produced by, in the beginning, Paramount and then Marvel Studios. Um, there's no movie there that you can omit completely and not miss anything. Um, that, that isn't important. Um, you can probably make the case for Incredible Hulk, but let's just continue and say that it's, you know, it's kind of important somewhat. So, I think it's worth, you know saying what's the narrative purpose of movie two out of the gate being um what's it called being eternals what do the eternals bring to the table if not being the origin of the new cosmic villain or something and that's what they have to that's what's going to explore and that's what i'm that's why i'm most interested in this because shang chi at its core is going to be the origin movie for uh shang chi as a character and why he's an Avenger. Um, 
And then it's like everything else, like Doctor Strange will be continuing the story of Doctor Strange, continuing the story of Black Panther. How do these people mesh in this new world post Thanos? Um, so it's going to be interesting to see where they go going forward. Um, I'm looking forward to Comic Con. Comic Con will be next month or later this month, actually, it's July already. Um, so that'll be where we get our first real indication as to what's happening um, with this. And I hope we can get some plot news for what uh, Eternals is. But I think until Eternals comes out, we won't even be able to figure out what the purpose of it being there is. But it has a purpose and it's going to be important going forward. Um, so yeah. So we'll wrap up there for today. Uh, tomorrow we'll be back with Far From Home and hopefully we can get a few more answers going forward. Um, because, like I said, it's the it's the after lightning scene on the Flash that sets up the new season and sets up where they're going next. Um, it's the Nora showing up at the end of season four um, to to get you pumped for season five. That's what that's what this is. This is them punctuating um, punctuating Endgame, saying we see what happened. We need to set up where we're going to go next. Um, so with that, we'll be back tomorrow with Far From Home. Have a great rest of your week. Uh, well, see you tomorrow. Have a great night.